Hello everybody and welcome to another Movie Hooker YouTube video and today I'm going to be reviewing and breaking down the first episode of HBO's The Last of Us. Now I'll start off by saying as a standalone series I would give it 8 or 9 out of 10 which is still great and as a game adaptation um, it goes all the way up to 11. It was perfect in my eyes anyway. So it was. So the series starts off in 1968, okay? And I thought that was a really weird year because um, I was like, why 1968? Um, and then I was like, oh, hold on a second. That's when George A. Romero released Night of the Living Dead. And Night of the Living Dead was pretty much the, the first movie uh, to have the humans attack the living. Or no, dead attack the living and then this like infection spreads and it's like an apocalyptic pandemic. I don't know. Is that a word? I don't know. Um, so yeah, starts off in 1968 with two epidemiologists and they are talking about, debating about this new fungus that is arrived on the scene that has potential, apocalyptic potential. And again, this this uh, fungus is real, and um, it's as terrifying as they make it out in the series. They just say that it can pass on to humans, and and it, the only way that it could do that was if our body temperatures significantly rise. So the guy goes, "What happens if the fungus mutates?" And then John Hanna, the actor, just goes. Well, we lose. I was like, wow, okay. Boom. Within like the first two minutes, we all we already know what this virus is. We know that it's already there and we know what it's capable of if it is ever passed on to humans. So it goes from 1968, boom, all the way to 2003. And that's pretty much the opening of uh, pretty much the start of the game as well, um, which is set in 2013. So they've changed the timelines, but for good reasons, I think, as well. Um, yeah, so 2003, we get introduced to Sarah and Joel and Tommy, Uncle Tommy. And um, it's Joel's birthday, and Sarah's looking to make him some pancakes, but there's no flour, so she ends up making some eggs. Joel has to go to work and he promises that he'll come back and he'll bring back a birthday cake and we'll celebrate later. So it's good then the way what happens because in the in the game we don't really get to know Sarah a lot. We just know that she's like the most important. Like she's cool for the, like the limited amount of time that she's there. But we just know that this is the thing that Joel loves the most. This is like, this is Joel's character builder, pretty much. You know, the death of her is, is the Joel now that we know in the series because of the death. Sorry. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so basically the cat, we spend some time with Sarah and I think it's cool. It was sort of like Shaun of the Dead, you know, where, uh, there's Shaun's walking to work and he's really hungover. And there's like all this military stuff going on in the background. He's oblivious to it. Well, it's sort of like that, even though she knows that um, there's something ain't right. There's a lot of police presence around and, you know, but she doesn't know that she's going to die, does she? That's the fucking main thing. And that's another thing. It's like Druckmann and Mazin just says, here, listen, we're going to take one of the most soul-crushing storylines and listen, we'll build in this character a little bit just to make her death. Um, that little bit more effective and it worked it fucking worked it was great so yeah we get to spend some time with sarah right sorry at when they're eating their eggs at the breakfast table there's a news report and i've watched the episode now three times and i keep trying to figure out what what they're saying and pretty much they're just talking about jakarta and it, it, like the first time i watched it, i was like why are they talking about jakarta i love indonesian cinema so straight away i was like boom that's in, in indonesia i don't know where a lot of places is but i know jakarta <laughs> is in indonesia and i was like why are they talking about indonesia so i've always the, the three times that i've watched it i've tried to really listen to that conversation and i can't really make out anything and i think the only way to do that is to get to separate the audio there which 
is above my capabilities. But anyway, yeah, so there's there's talk of Jakarta. And then, right, we follow Sarah all day. Then she goes to her neighbor's house, and her neighbor is baking cookies as well. And the other neighbor, they're pretty much... Um, they're pretty much already mushroom people. Let's, I'm going to call them mushroom people. Um, good system of down song, by the way. But, um, yeah, they're already mushroom people, and they don't know it. So, like, they're baking cookies, and Sarah refuses to eat the, those cookies because they're fucking raisins. Why would you want a raisin cookie? It's just wrong. So, yes, she lends a DVD. The, the old granny in the wheelchair starts doing some insanely creepy, insanely really simple, really simple scene. Out of focus, old lady in the background with Sarah in focus on her, just like doing all these like mouth movements and twitching, and it's like holy shit, that was creepy. And again, it's right in front of Sarah, and she just hasn't, she hasn't got a clue. It's as I say, it's like she's Shaun of the Dead, you know. And so, yeah. Anyway, once the dad comes back to the house, um, that's when all hell breaks loose. That's when Joel turns into like Operation Desert Storm Joel. He doesn't care. He's out to kill. And the only thing that he wants to do is protect his daughter, which doesn't happen again, which is the reason why Joel is the way that he is. Um, so, yeah, let's just go to the scene, the heartbreak scene, the, the Sarah's death. After the, the car chase, and just again, the, the, the detail to the game, it was like you were actually playing that, that scene again. Even the camera angle uh, was putting you in the player's point of view. It was fucking great. It was just, even the people running across the roads, they, to the, the, the way everything exploded, it was just like, wow. Really makes you want to play the game. And for those who haven't played the game, it's only going to make it better. It's not going to spoil it. It's going to make it better. Um, so yeah, right, so Sarah is about to get killed right after hurting her ankle. And here's a cool thing that I thought, um, which is quite relevant to Pascal or Pascal. When Troy Baker was shooting that scene originally, um, he, a he asked Druckmann to um, give him a call a week before that scene because he has to prepare for it. So... Druckmann kept his word, phoned up Troy Baker, who played Joel in the games, and says, Yo, Troy, we got this we got this scene now in one week. We need to you need to get your shit together. He goes right, puts down the phone, and like I'm gonna say he went full Daniel Day Lewis, let's put it that way. He went full DDL, let's say. And yeah, got to the scene, shot the scene, thought he was like the best actor in the world, done it, and that was cool. Um they wrapped up, and then I think like a week later, Druckmann phoned him and says, right, man, we're going to have to do that scene again. He's like, what? Fucking Daniel Day-Lewis, the shit out of that. And he's like, yeah, we're going to have to do it again, but you're going to have to just leave your ego at the door. And I was like, oh. So that, I, I heard this from Troy Baker himself, and he really appreciated that. He had to go back in there and just do strip that back, and that's that Druckmann got the scene out of him that Druckmann had in mind, and that's just... Again, it's just the transition from game in this series. It's just remarkable. Pascal is just, it's right there. I was like, holy shit, there's our Joel. That's him. And everything else was irrelevant. I was like, right, where are the haters at now? How can anybody, how can a fan of the game watch that and not be all like, holy shit. I've seen it three times now and I'm like, holy shit. Right. So, we fast forward down to 2023. So here's a good thing. What happened in those 20 years right there? I'm going to tell you now. We're going to find out somehow because there's going to be a fucking Last of Us franchise. And it's going to be like, well, maybe they won't allow it, which is, you know, I think that maybe they won't, you know, but like there's so much potential of like what happened in those 20 years and stuff. Um, you no, know, they might walk and dead it, as we'll call it, <laughs> because they're good at that, aren't they, the walking dead? Uh, yeah, so 2023. Now, I will say that I would have liked a little bit of a, a more, I would have liked a, a better look into this world now. You know, we're just thrown in there, and we just know that the government are bad and they're hanging people. Public hangings are back. 
you know, so it's went back to like old school nastiness, 1984, um, shit, like that Fahrenheit 451, Brave New World, all that crack. So anyway, we know that there's a group that are fighting against the government and that group are called the Fireflies. And now Joel is a broken man. He doesn't give a shit. He actually doesn't give a shit if he cleans up shit. He's all the guy, what 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 job pays better? And he's like the one cleaning shit. And he's like, right, yeah, okay. Because he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Sorry. Um so yeah, we're gonna go now and we're just gonna go on to Ellie, right? And again, I'm just like, oh my god, because she's perfect. She's absolutely perfect. Um, she's got her mannerisms down, she's got her voice down, and she's like She's way more feistier, you know. She's got like a hell of a dirty mouth. She just curses like nonstop. And this is the thing: we all know that you know Joel's going to be transporting Sarah, and th this is the whole point of the game—the connection between these two characters and how Joel tries his hardest not to love this young girl like like a daughter, but it's just impossible and. Believe me, when I say Joel goes, he will do anything for this girl, it's going to be crazy how what we're going to see in this series. If they get, oh, it's going to be brilliant. So, yeah, what was I saying there? Yeah, with Sarah, with Sarah, she when she seen Joel hit her with the ranch, hit the neighbor with the ranch, um, she was horrified at her dad, and she was like, holy shit, like, this is scary. But Joel's like, I just want to protect my daughter. So then, when we fast forward to when Ellie just stabbed, you see, Ellie was born in the virus, it wasn't, wasn't like full swing, and she knows nothing else but how to survive, and she ain't scared to stab someone, and you know, she's like trying to stab loads of people <laughs> in the series, and she actually does do this once she gets scanned, and it shows that she's red and she's infected or she's immune, but uh, she stabs the guard. So then Joel has a flashback. Holy shit. So then Joel has a flashback and jumps on the guard and completely fucking like gives him like an irreversible fire extinguisher scene only with like his fists just bang, bang. And then if you look, you're, you look at Ellie and it's like, is she horrified? I don't think she's horrified at all. I think she's like, right, this dude knows how to handle himself and I'm going to be well paired up with him. I think that is the the way that she was thinking rather than being horrified the way that Sarah was she was like the complete opposite she likes it so that's pretty much all I want to say um about it it was just I can't wait for episode two and it was like man I've what waited now two years for the first episode and now this oh, this fucking wait every single week and i hate it i wish i could just go into hyper sleep for like nine weeks and then wake up and just watch every episode i'd do that i probably would um oh so here's the other thing that i want to talk about and i wish i fucking picked up on this but as soon as i heard the theory yesterday i was like oh shit it all clicked the set of watched it three times like oh my god right so that's why i was explaining the eggs jacarda jacarda the cookies in the game, you don't really, it's not thrown in your face what the cause of infection is, how this cordyceps virus actually spread to humans, right? But there is little newspaper cuttings and stuff like that lying on the floors and stuff that pretty much it's like an Easter egg that the, the infection was spread through food and now it's been sent, it's been sent to vending machines all around the world and it's now, it was in, I can't remember where it started, and now it's in Mexico, and it's like, it is, like, that is the start of the apocalypse. So, there we go. I was like, fucking food. I, I think it's green, stuff with green in it in the games. I'm not 100% sure, but Floyer, fucking Floyer, she didn't have pancakes um, because she had no flour, so she made eggs. The Jakarta thing I found out is the biggest, the world's biggest flour mill. The cookies is why fucking 
granny and the neighbor and the husband are now like mushroom people because and she didn't sarah didn't eat the cookies because there was raisins in them and why would you eat raisin cookies as i said but there you go how about that was it the food it hasn't been confirmed yet but i know for a fact that it's that's how the virus is spread and this makes perfect sense it was right in front of us all along how about that wow just i'm going to leave it at that and holy shit yeah can't wait what did everybody else think of it tell me if you have seen it and did you like it as much as me have you played the games are you going to play the games um uh, let me know and if you like the video subscribe cheers bye